Hi everyone, Webdunce here. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this Euro style band using what I call the two ovals method. Alright, we will jump right into it. We'll create a new file. I'll use the small objects millimeters template and we'll jump into the front viewport, lay in the sizing circle. We're going to make this a US size 10, so give it a diameter of 19.34. Just going to zoom in a bit here. Let's offset this by 1.8 millimeters and then let's stretch that uh, offset circle out horizontally with that selected and let's turn on project too okay um, with this oval selected let's go to transform and go to rotate now by default copy will be set to no go ahead and click on it and change that to yes the center of rotation will be the center of the world so type 0 and hit enter and the angle is going to be 90 so type 90 and hit enter and then hit enter again to exit the command this horizontal oval is the control oval we're only going to make adjustments to the control oval this vertical oval is the child oval and it will update itself automatically as we make adjustments to the control oval we're never going to directly adjust the child oval because that will break history okay so uh, you can actually adjust this to however you see fit horizontally you're going to be affecting the overall shape of the ring the further out you go horizontally the more square the ring becomes the further inward you go horizontally the more rounded the ring becomes if you adjust it vertically you're affecting the thickness at the centers but we're going to leave it at 1.8 and I'm going to bring this out you know I don't normally do this I just usually do this till it till it looks right to me I uh, stretch it horizontally until it looks right but what I want to do because we're doing a tutorial I'm going to put a point in the middle uh, and this will help everyone to kind of achieve about the same results we're going to put this point at the center of the world so let me just do that again I clicked on the point tool I type zero and hit enter I'm selecting the point I'm clicking on the arrow and then I'm going to move it backwards by negative 16.5 okay and then just zoom in over here near the point and just stretch that oval until it looks like it goes through that point it's okay if you're off a little bit okay you don't have to be 100 percent precise but that should give you roughly the same results that i'm getting here again i don't normally do that thing with the point that's just so we can all end up with roughly the same size ovals here okay all right uh, so once you're happy with the overall shape of the ring and the thickness you select both the ovals, come to Curve Tools, Curve Boolean, and then uh, click in the middle. Well, uh, first make sure it says Delete Input Equals All up here. So it probably says None by default. Go ahead and click on that and set it to All. Then click in the center uh, between the two, uh, you know, the, the middle of the two ovals here and hit Enter. You'll be left with this kind of, um, uh, with this Euro style shank, or Euro style shape, I mean and uh, then the next thing we want to do is fill at the corners now typically in a real world situation i would probably uh, save this uh, to a different layer make a copy of this shape right here to a different layer before i fill at the corners that way i could get back to the unfilleted version very easily so you would just right click on one of the layers click copy objects to layers now i have two of these objects one on the purple layer one on the default layer and i'll just change the name of the purple layer to copies all right, so we're not going to use this copy in this tutorial. I'm just saying that it would be there as an easy way to get back to the original shape, uh, you know, before we filleted the corners. In case you don't like the, the fillets and uh, maybe you save the file, later you open it again and you'd like to try a different uh, radius on your fillets and you can just easily get back to this original shape. All right, so let's, uh, with the Euro style shape selected here, Let's go ahead and click on fill at corners and let's type in a value of 3 and hit enter. Let's jump over to the perspective viewport, uh, select both curves and let's extrude those out. So come to solid tools, click on extrude and we want a 5 millimeter wide ring so let's type in half that value 2.5, hit enter. Let's switch over to shaded view here and there we go. We've got the uh, base shape here. 
Now you could do different things with this. For instance, you could fill it all of the edges. You could just box select it and fill it all of the edges uh, like that with the same radius. Or you could put uh, small fillets on the inside of the ring and larger fillets like 0.8 radius fillets on the outside of the ring. Yeah, for that's a different look. I'm going to control Z back. What we're going to do is round the top out. So we're going to come to the front viewport and click on this curve. Right here, we're getting a choice between the curve and the extent extrusion. Click on the curve and offset that. Uh, we'll we'll uh, offset that 0.7 millimeters, and we're going to offset to the inside. Okay, then click on the ring. You can do that by, when you click here, you get two choices, curve and extrusion. And you can see when you uh, hover over extrusion, the inside of the ring lights up as well as the outside. So the extrusion is the ring. So click on that then click on split and then click on this curve we just made and hit enter and then um, you can even in the front view here you can click on right there to remove the outside of the ring if we switch over to perspective view you can see we have split off the outside of the ring and that's what we're deleting so just delete that and then uh, let's switch back to front view we also want to delete this curve that we made okay so be sure that you don't select the poly surface be sure you select the curve if you find that easier to select in perspective view you know it's this curve right here all right so we want to delete that we don't need that anymore let's jump over to the right viewport zoom in here again make sure you've got project turned on uh, under curve tools come down here to the you know there's several arc tools to choose from we want this one right here it gives us the start end point uh, start end and point on arc click on that click on one side the other side and then on the uh, curve there so let me do that again we're going to snap to a quad on this side of the ring a quad on this side of the ring and then we're going to snap to a midpoint or perhaps a quad on the curve uh, that defines i'll just switch over to perspective view you know this is this is our arc here and we snapped to a midpoint on this curve right here but it was easier to do in the right viewport with project turned on. Okay, so now we will switch to the perspective view and we will come to surface tools, sweep two rails. We'll click on, uh, it's asking for our first rail. We'll just click on one of the edges of the ring. It's asking for the second rail. That will be the other edge of the ring. And then it's asking for a sweep shape and that's going to be this. We'll hit enter and click okay. And then just click on that, that surface we just made, click on the rest of the ring and join that all together. All right, now this is another case where we're gonna fill at the, the edges here, and I would probably, uh, with that selected, right click on copies here, this layer, and click on copy objects to layer. So now I have a, a copy of this object before we uh, fill at the edges in case I need to get back to this unfilleted version, okay? So we're, again, we're not gonna use that in this tutorial, but that's just something I would probably do in a world, real world situation. If I turn this on, you can see we've got that purple curve and we've also got a purple copy of the ring, but I'm going to turn that purple layer off. Okay, now we're going to fillet the edges. So come to solid tools, click on fillet edges. Uh, let's give the radius of 0 0.3, a fairly small radius, and we'll just box select the entire ring, hit enter a couple of times, and there you go. So we're done with the ring. Uh, all we want to do now is uh, just kind of create a material for it. Let's switch over to rendered view and uh, let's uh, to get rid of all these curves let's click on the ring and then click on visibility and then click on isolate objects. Okay so now all that's on here is the actual ring itself. Come, I want to change the background to kind of a light blue color so come over here to the rendering tab come down to backdrop click on this color box right here and my light blue color is this. You can copy that color if you want. You don't have to, but if you want to, uh, come to click on this drop down and click on HSV sliders and set your values here to 205, 12, and 88. All right. Okay, now let's switch over to the materials tab and create a material, a kind of silver material for this ring. Click on this plus sign, click on metal, and by default, it makes a silvery material, and you may be satisfied with that or you can make it slightly darker. Just click on the color box here and click on the drop down. Click on custom color list and click on silver. Okay. And I'm, I'm happy with that polish level, but you can change the polish level if you want. Uh, you can drag the slider around or you can double click on it 
uh, to set it to a specific value. But I'm going to leave it at 85, the default. All right, there you go. We've got this uh, Euro, Euro style band uh, with a kind of rounded uh, outside here and filleted edges. I think that looks pretty nice. And that wraps up this that, that that wraps up this tutorial. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see all of you in future videos. <laughs>